Jurgen Klopp has announced today that he will be stepping down as Liverpool manager at the end of the season. He says he's running out of energy and he's taking at least a year off from managing, but he also says that he will not manage an English team in the future if it isn't Liverpool. So, obviously, huge loss for Liverpool, huge loss for the Premier League, but it sounds like he's doing what's best for his health, so you can't fault him for that. So, in today's video, we'll go over a very brief history of Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool, and in the comments, I want you to tell me where you think Klopp will end up next, where we'll see him next, whether it be at a different club, in a different league, um, managing internationally, maybe he goes back to Liverpool, heck, maybe he becomes a, a commentator, an analyst, maybe he writes a book, but let me know where you think we will see Klopp next, who's gonna hire him next, if and when he comes back to the footballing world. But now, let's go back to 2015 and the beginning of Klopp's career at Liverpool. So, at that time, Liverpool's co-owner, John W. Henry, he's part of the uh, Fenway Sports Group, and he wanted a mathematical solution, kind of like Moneyball, which they had used for um, the Red Sox, bringing them to the World Series, what was it, three times? Um, so he wanted to use math. I feel like my, I feel like there's sibilance. Let me just fix this. Okay. <laughs> he wanted to use math to identify the next uh, manager of Liverpool. And so he ended up going to a Cambridge physicist, Ian Graham, to find this sort of mathematical solution, and they identified through, through this like data analysis, Jurgen Klopp as the man to manage Liverpool, and specifically, he would, they figured, eventually win them the Champions League. That was the goal. Klopp had recently left. Dortmund um, at the end of the previous season, so he was available. And on October 8th, 2015, Klopp signed a three-year deal with Liverpool, replacing Brendan Rodgers. And in his first press conference, Klopp said, that he would deliver trophies within four years at Liverpool. So his debut was against Tottenham. Uh, that was away at Tottenham on October 17th. And the result was a nil-nil draw. Uh, the next week, they played against Southampton at home and that ended in a draw as well. And on October 28th, Klopp got his first win as Liverpool manager in a League Cup win against Bournemouth. Uh, three days later, he got his first Premier League win with Liverpool, um, in a 3-1 win uh, against Chelsea. And 
they actually, they did make it to the League Cup final that year, uh, but they lost to Manchester City on points. On top of that, uh, they were in Europa that year. They played against Dortmund in the quarterfinals, so Klopp's previous club, uh, and they won 5-4 on aggregate. Then they faced Villarreal in the semifinals, and they won that round 3-1 on aggregate. And that brought Liverpool to their first European final since 2007. Ultimately, they lost to Sevilla 3-1. So, Liverpool finished the 2015-2016 season in 8th place, which was actually two spots lower than the previous season, where they had finished 6th. But Fenway really wanted trophies, and I mean, they had gone to the final of two competitions. So in the summer of 2016, Klopp and his coaching staff signed a six-year contract extension, which basically kept them at Liverpool until 2022. The next two seasons, uh, 2016-17 and 17-18, Liverpool finished fourth in the league both seasons, and they qualified for the Champions League. So, that first year out uh, to the Champions League, they actually made it to the final. Uh, but in the end, they lost 3-1 to Real Madrid. Now, at the time, Liverpool had really strong attacking, but they did concede a relatively high number of goals. So first, Klopp signed uh, Virgil van Dijk, I think, in the uh, January 2018 window, for like a world record transfer fee for a, a defender, and then the following transfer window in the summer, he signed uh, Allison. So he really sort of strengthened that weak spot for Liverpool. So now let's talk about that 2018-2019 season. Liverpool started the season uh, with the best league start in their history. They won their first six matches in a row, and by Boxing Day, they were top of the league with a six-point lead. They uh, became the fourth Premier League team to be un unbeaten at this point in the calendar, sort of mid-season. And they went from conceding too many goals to tying the all-time record for the fewest goals conceded at this stage of a top-flight season. So they only conceded seven goals and had 12 clean sheets in 19 matches. Now, they did finish the season in second place behind Manchester City. I think actually their only loss that season came against Manchester City. But they finished with 97 points, which was the most points scored by a team in the Premier League with 
without winning the title. No other second place team had ever finished on 97 points. But they were also busy with cup competitions that year. They were knocked out of the League Cup uh, by Chelsea in the third round, and then they were knocked out of the FA Cup by Wolves, also in the third round. But how important, really, are those domestic cups when you've got your eyes on the Champions League, right? Well, Liverpool, they finished second in their group stage of the Champions League. They squeaked by Napoli uh, on goals scored. Then they got Bayern Munich uh, in the round of 16. They won 3-1. to one. I think after a scoreless first leg, if I'm not mistaken. Then they got Porto in the quarterfinals and won 6-1 on aggregate. Then, in the semifinal, they get Barcelona. And Barcelona, that year, was meant to win the whole thing. And sure enough, in the first leg at Camp Nou, Liverpool loses 3-0. It's all but over. How do you come back from a 3-0 deficit in the semi-finals of the Champions League? And famously, uh, Klopp was reported to have told the players to just try or fail in the most beautiful way. Um, speaking of the second leg to come. So we go to Anfield. Salah and Firmino are out with injuries. Just to add insult to, what is it? Add, in, add insult to injury, that's what it is. <laughs> but against all odds, Klopp and Liverpool win that game 4-0. So, they go through to the final on an aggregate score of 4-3. Incredible comeback. In the final, they play against Tottenham. They only have 39% of the possession in this match, but that's all they need, <laughs> because they win the Champions League 2-0. This becomes Klopp's first trophy with Liverpool and his first career Champions League title. Now, the second trophy came soon after. Um, soon after having won the Champions League, they played against Chelsea in the Super Cup. And they won that match 5-4 on penalties. Then the 2019-2020 season starts. They set a club record uh, with seven consecutive away league wins. Liverpool becomes the first Premier League club to win their first six games two seasons in a row. Klopp also won uh, best 
men's coach at the FIFA Awards that year. He was, I think, 10 points clear of Pep. And before the halfway point of this season, they set a new club record of 32 consecutive league matches without defeat, dating back to that Manchester City loss. Uh, that number would end up going to 44 before an eventual loss. But before that happens, <laughs> in December, Liverpool top their Champions League group and Klopp signs a contract extension to 2024. Later that month, uh, Liverpool win their first FIFA cl uh, Club World Cup, which, I mean, say what you want about that competition, Liverpool became the first English club to win the international treble, so the Champions League, the Super League, and the Club World Cup. So. It's worth mentioning. In the second half of the season, uh, in February, Liverpool are 22 points clear at the top of the Premier League, which is the largest points gap ever between first and second place in top flight history, dating back to before the Premier League. And eventually, um, as you can imagine, Klopp and Liverpool clinched the title with seven games left in the season, and it, it was Liverpool's first and only league title of the Premier League era. Might be another one to come soon, though. It's the table's looking good for Liverpool. Now, in the interest of time, let's zip through some more of his achievements with the club. So in 2021, Liverpool became the first English club to win all six of its Champions League group matches. In 2022, they won the EFL Cup, and then they also won the FA Cup. And it's worth mentioning here that after that, Klopp also did sign another two-year contract extension, which brings him to 2016, although now we know that's been annulled in one way or another. But that summer, Liverpool won the Community Shield with a 3-1 win over Manchester City, and that basically completed the trophies for Liverpool under Klopp. Klopp basically platinumed coaching, managing a Premier League team. He, he got all the trophies. And listen, guys, I, I could have gone on and on about Klopp's history at Liverpool, his genius, his community involvement, but I hope that, you know, in the short time I had, that I did the man justice. I mean, he's he's going to go down as one of the greats in the Premier League, for sure. He's got, you know, I think, again, he's sort of completed, he's, he's, he's completed managing. Like, he's, he's done everything he could have done with Liverpool. It was incredible to watch him. And I think this is a well-deserved break, obviously. You have to take care of yourself. No job is worth it, even when it's managing the, currently the best team in the league. 
so I can't wait to see where he lands when he's ready to get back to work if he decides to get back to work and I think that's where I'll leave things for now thank you so much for hanging out with me I'll see you in the next video